Hi, everyone, and welcome to this live demo from the Academic Insight Lab. My name is Kimberly Becker, and today we're talking about outlining with ChatGPT. Outlining is, of course, an effective strategy for getting started on a manuscript, but the beginning is often hard because that blank page is just sort of looming in front of you. So what I've been doing lately is using ChatGPT as a kind of co-writing partner. And even though it's trial and error process, it's really improving my efficiency and help, helping me to get moving on my research faster. So today what I'm going to do is walk you through my process for starting to outline a totally new research idea using generative AI. And if you're worried about ethics, let me just assure you that our belief, which is reflected in all of our suggestions and practices, is that you are the disciplinary expert using the chat to validate your ideas and jog your memory. If you have an idea for research project and you're not ready to pitch it to a human, consider showing it to a robot. Uh, they will never judge you. Um, they might, however, uh, save your input either for you to find later or to train their models. So we always start with turning off chat history and training. All right, so let's start with going down to the bottom here to the bottom left where you see your name and the three horizontal dots. Click on the dots and choose settings. And then you're going to navigate to the data control setting. This is where you're going to make sure that your chat history and training is turned off. Because as you can see, what that says is save new chats on this browser to your history and allow them to be used to improve our models. And this is not what we want when we're putting in our original research ideas. For lower stakes writing, it's completely fine. Um, in fact, I use it all the time with the chat history and training on. Um, but when I'm putting in sections of my research, uh, I, I tend to turn it off because I just I want to be very careful with um, my own intellectual property. So once you have that turned off, so it should not be green, it should be gray. Close that window. Okay, so let's imagine that we are interested in writing about burnout in ER nurses. I'm going to go and get a prompt that I wrote prior to recording this. And I'm going to paste it in. I'm going to walk you through how I write a prompt. When I am getting ready to use ChatGPT, there are three really important aspects that I want to include in a prompt. The first one is giving a role so that the chat knows who is doing the writing. So what I did in the beginning is I am writing the introduction and background of a research manuscript on the growing rate of burnout in nurses who work in emergency departments. So now the chat knows I'm a researcher. This is my field. Then I go on to give all kinds of context and background information about the topic, providing some details that allow it to create an outline based on the input here. And then at the end of my prompt, I always ask it to help me with something or to create something. So this is the output. Help me craft an outline that goes from general to specific. The output should be a topic sentence outline. So I'm asking it to do that so that it generates only topic sentences and then um, in theory, it will just give me um, topics after that that are not complete sentences. Um, we'll see what happens. Click enter. And then what we have here is a topic, general overview, and then we have two, um, two ideas, introduction of the topic of burnout in nurses, significance of addressing burnout, growing rate of burnout, highlighting unique challenges. So actually it hasn't created any complete sentences for me. It's just given me an idea for a topic sentence and it hasn't actually generated the sentence, which I'm comfortable with because that allows me the room to be the disciplinary expert and write that sentence as I normally would. But now it's jogged my memory and it's given me a specific way to do that. Um, as, I, as I told it, moving from general to specific. But what if, I'm looking through this and I don't really like what I see. So um, growing rate of burnout during COVID pandemic, conflicting results on effective of mindfulness, 
um, need for a systematic review? What if I want to know if there are other potential ways to structure this systematic review? So I'm going to ask the chat, are there other ways to organize a systematic review on this topic? Please show me the other alternatives for structuring such an introduction on this topic. And I'm going to click enter. And it says, certainly, here are two alternative ways that you could structure an introduction and background of a systematic review on the topic. Option one is a chronological approach. Of course, chronology is related to time. So it's going to start in the past and it's going to move toward the future um, as the writing progresses. And it gives me uh, a way to do that if we look down here. And then after that first option, you see option two, problem solution approach. Here's another way that I could organize it. So if I did not want to do it from general to specific, or from chronological past to present, that now I have a, a third option actually, uh, because our first prompt was the first option. And so this is using a problem and solution approach. You could also ask it for a cause effect approach and all of them will end up with kind of some basic, basically the same information, but it gives you a lot of different ways to think about it. So just like if you were working with a research partner, the chat can be a co-writer and prompt you as a disciplinary expert to think outside the box in ways that you might not have considered as you were approaching the task. Okay, so the final thing I wanna show you is how to use ChatGPT when you're writing an outline to check and see if there's anything that maybe you haven't considered. So now I'm gonna prompt it to look at this whole topic, these outlines, these kind of subtopics and give me any ideas about whether or not this is a complete and whole way to approach the topic. So I'm going to say, is there anything that I haven't considered? Are there any other topics or subtopics that could enhance the argument I'm trying to make in this systematic Reading. Please share them in a list. Okay, so this is a dialogue system. So it's going to remember basically what you just entered and it carries that with it into the next interaction between you and the bot. Um, so I'm not going to say again that I'm a researcher writing. I'm not going to repeat all that. I'm just going to tell it to consider this context. Are there any other subtopics maybe I've overlooked? And then I'm going to ask it to share them in a list. Otherwise, it's going to it could write me an essay. If you don't give it a specific output style, it might generate a whole essay. And ethically, I don't have a problem with that, reading it and you know synthesizing the information and taking it and making it my own. But if you are afraid that you're going to be influenced by having this whole essay reproduced in front of you, uh, you may want to just consistently ask it for a list or a table even. Um, but that's one way to sort of uh, at least feel like you are using best practices to make this as ethical as possible. I'm going to click enter here, see what we get. Certainly, so it's still kind of keeping in mind this idea of an outline. I would consider this a form of an outline. And so it's giving me other things to consider here. Workload, emotional demands, um, um, types of mindfulness interventions, mechanisms for action, measurement and assessment of this, implementation and sustainability, other interventions. So it's giving me a lot of other things to think about. Now, this is related to the scope of my project, right? So at this point, if I'm just starting to think about the systematic review, I may not have an idea of how big or how narrow I want to make this project. Um, and so asking ChatGPT to generate a list of other ideas will help me to decide how big is the scope of this systematic review. And that will help me to focus on the most important topics and prioritize my own um, goal with, with the writing. 
So as you can see, chat gives me great feedback in exactly the format that I want, um, but that's mostly because I fed it a role. I said, I'm a researcher, you know, I, I gave it some context and I asked for a task or an output style. So if you use those best practices, you can really do uh, an effective job of generating an outline. Um, and then you can, you know, interact further with the bot to revise the outline if you see something that doesn't quite fit with your expectation or it goes in a different direction. Um, so the three key takeaways for this is that you can use ChatGPT for information generation or ideation, we sometimes call it. It provides extensive data on a wide array of topics. It gives you structural assistance in offering that logical, well-sequenced and coherent outline. And it can be a writing aid. So it, you may not be concerned about your language, your grammar, your style here in this outlining stage, but the generation of the vocabulary that's associated with this topic might jog your memory and help you to include information that you may not have considered up to this point. Thank you for joining us today for this demo about outlining with ChatGPT. You can find out more about ChatGPT for academic purposes by visiting our website, academicinsightlab.org, and signing up for a free Explorer membership. Or if you're ready to level up, you can sign up for a Pioneer membership, which will really help you to step up your research writing game.